Hey everybody, it's Eva Shockey here, and I am here today because I get asked all the time what it was like to grow up in the family that I grew up with. If you're not familiar, I come from a kind of unique <laughs> background, um, kind of unique childhood. My dad is Jim Shockey. If you want his whole story, you can definitely Google him or look him up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, he is like a world-renowned hunter and outfitter and TV host of outdoor adventure shows. And then my mom, who they are like the most happily married couple. I think they've been married for, ooh, put myself on the spot. I wanna say like 36 years, <laughs> 36 years, somewhere in there. Uh, my mom, who does not love to be as much in the spotlight at this stage, just she's a little bit harder to find online, but um, she's the cutest, sweetest, amazing, most amazing woman I've ever met. And is like the complete opposite of my dad. She was actually a, vegetarian ballerina when they first met and my dad kind of tricked her and he was an antique dealer and then fast forward like six months they got married fast forward a few more months and he basically started hunting as a full-time job <laughs> as he was married to the vegan so you know life changes everyone adapts everyone grows but that was the beginning of my parents my mom did not really quite understand like the depth of my dad's passion for the outdoors but as they were married and as they were married longer and longer and kind of grew together she very quickly realized how incredible the outdoors is and my dad was really i don't know let free to go explore his passions and to um, share it with the world and that's where i kind of came into the mix so we have had television shows gosh I'm 33 now. I want to say I was about seven when uh, we first started filming shows, maybe even younger. I remember camera crews being in my house all the time. I remember way back then when I was five, six, seven, something like that, my dad would be filming and he was just, <laughs> now he's good on camera. Back then, not so good on camera. And it was so funny and he was just so awkward. And if you Google old footage, I'm sure you'll find it. But he was just so awkward and uncomfortable because it had never really been done before. He actually, like I said, he was an antique dealer. And then when he wanted to change from hunting just being his passion to hunting actually being his livelihood, um, he took a really big leap of faith, I guess. And one day he owned antique stores at the time. And one day one of his clients came into his store his name was Ralph Lauren, who you probably recognize that name from like the brand. And that is the same Ralph Lauren. He was one of my dad's clients because he bought antiques from my dad. And he said, I want every single antique out of all three of your store locations. And that was what my dad, you know, that was his job, his career. And my dad was like, all right. And he emptied out all of his stores and he sold them to Ralph Lauren. He took the check from Ralph Lauren and bought hunting territory with it. <laughs> and that is kind of where the hunting started in my family as far as making it into like, not just a lifestyle, but actually a livelihood at the same time. So I grew up right around this time when my dad suddenly had this hunting outfit and a hunting guiding service. And it really just wasn't much of a thing. I mean, I don't know that it really existed to the extent that it exists now. And so to, promote his area instead of just paying for ads in a magazine or whatever they did back then <laughs> before the Google machine. Um, he would film his hunts and then sell those DVDs or eventually, or not DVDs, VHSs <laughs> turned into DVDs. Um, or he, for at one point, he got a segment on Outdoor Channel with Bill Jordan and it was about outdoors and hunting and stuff. And in the same time, he was also doing a lot of writing. I think he actually started with the writing and went to the filming, but right around this time, he was basically promoting his area, a hunting area, because it was the best you could get, but a really organic way to share that was through magazines, through articles, um, and then eventually leading into through the filming and the VHSs. And so that is how I grew up. I grew up going on like family vacations, and <laughs> instead of going to like, a resort like my friends would go to or going on a camping trip like you know kind of like a fancy glamping is what it would be called now we would go into the mountains <laughs> with no power and just some cans of food and go stay there for a week and my dad would basically go hunting and we would all just kind of hang out and play in the streams or one time i remember it was christmas break it must have been because it was my birthday which is in january and we took a road trip from, we lived on an island in Canada, 
and we took a road trip to Mexico <laughs> as a family so my dad could go hunting. And they called it our like family vacation, but we really quickly learned that family vacation in the Shockey family was not really a vacation. It was a hunting trip and it was just bringing your family along. And it's really interesting now that I'm a mom. I have um, two babies. I have a four-year-old Lenny, a little girl, and then a one-and-a-half-year-old named Boone, who's a little boy. And it's really interesting now to see, first of all, how hard it is to take your family on like adventures. It's a lot easier to find a babysitter or leave them at home with kids and just go out by yourself or with your husband or wife or whoever you go out with. Um, but it's incredible how much those adventures shaped the rest of my life and shaped my passions and shaped how much um, value I put in going out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself and spending time as a family in like new places and going on adventures as a family. So the fact that my parents were able to do that for us my whole life has really, it's been ingrained in me that now my husband Tim and I um, believe very strongly that that is very important. So the amount of trips that we've been on that I'm not going to lie, would have been a lot less stressful without babies. We've had Len Boone is a little young and he was basically born and then the pandemic happened. But um, Lenny, which she was born four years ago, the amount of deer camps and elk camps and <laughs> like just log cabins that she stayed in and airplanes she went on before she was probably three years old was just crazy. And I think that that is a testament to my parents because I really want to pass that down to the next generation because of how my parents were able to pass it down to me. Um, I think just having, I know a lot of people are interested in the gym shocky aspect of this. Having Jim as a dad was so incredible, like so cool. But honestly, it took me quite a while to realize that having Jim as a dad was different than having like Bob as a dad or Joe as a dad or whoever else everyone's dads were. Um, I just never really thought twice about it. I actually went away to university and I went all, so I lived in Canada, grew, born and raised, and then I moved to Australia for university. And when I got there, no one really knew me from back home. So no one knew my family or what they did. And honestly, it wasn't like I was trying to keep it a secret. I just really didn't think it was a big deal. <laughs> so someone eventually Googled my family or something and found out what my dad did. And I mean, you would have thought it was like the biggest news of the year. And I think that was when I realized like my dad's, it's not that it's so fancy or anything like that. It's just so unique. It was such a story for these people to like be curious about and want to hear all the details. And so that was something that it took me a while to realize. But then once I realized that as I was sort of in my twenties, um, getting more involved with the outdoors, the only real feeling I had was just like gratitude for such an incredible father figure as far as someone who first of all he taught me to work hard um that was something my entire life from when i was little was like work hard and do the best job you can do at whatever you're doing and my dad always said if he was a plumber he would have been the best plumber you could be or if he sold newspapers he would have sold the most newspapers of anyone like basically do your best work at whatever is in front of you and if you want to do something else then do your best job today and if you want to transition to something else transition but don't like slack off on what you're doing so you can change because that's you know it's not morally correct so that was a big thing to follow your passions was something that he really ingrained in us as well and that was he always said both my parents said this but they always said find something you want to do that makes you happy at least 80 percent of the time because i think at the end of the day everyone has bad days Everyone has days when even the coolest job in the world is not that cool and you don't want to be there, but find something you want to do 80% of the time that makes you happy because it's your one life and this is your chance. And so he followed his passions. My mom was incredible and just was like, go Jim, go. <laughs> and he went all over the universe. Like, I think he has more species than anyone else in the world um, of animals. And aside from just the hunting stuff, he was really multi-passionate about different things like um, antiques and heirlooms and like crazy, just like rustic fossils and all kinds of things that you and I might not understand a lot about, but he loves it. So I got to see him also exploring that and all those years of him traveling, 
he was collecting those little things and the little gizmos and gadgets and <laughs> shipping boxes home from like Tajikistan or wherever he was at the time. And there'd be huge crates coming home with like stuff that he found in the villages or he bought from villagers. And <laughs> now we have a family museum. So if you ever get a chance, it's on Vancouver Island. It's called the Hand of Man Museum. And it's, there's, it's a combination of just mounts of every animal you can imagine. But also what's really interesting is it's like a learning experience for a lot of people. There's iPads, they tell stories, there's footage from our TV shows. Um, and you have an option. If you want the hunting version, you'll see like the hunt. And if you don't want the hunting version and you're just there for more of the museum experience, you can see that. So that was something else that my dad spent his whole life curating and creating and just turning into this amazing, amazing project. So that was another thing throughout my life was, again, follow your passions. Sometimes they adapt and change and you kind of think you're going one way and you take another route and that's all part of it and just making the best decisions you can make. So it was kind of a strange <laughs> childhood in that respect. My dad was a professional hunter. I mean, there were definitely years, it was sort of like mid-teen years as a female and there were really no girl hunters where I was from that I definitely downplayed like the professional hunter is my dad story but in hindsight I'm so proud of who he is obviously now at this point I've come full circle and I'm so proud of it I mean I was under since I've been 20 20 ish um, and love it and love the whole industry and love the outdoors and the adventure and all those things but I just am so lucky to have the background that I have to have the support I have and then that has allowed me to use my voice for hopefully the better I mean I try every single day to talk about family and outdoor lifestyle and healthy living and feel at the table and um, filling your freezer and all those things that I think most people watching this are probably in agreement about. And a very, very big part of that was thanks to my parents. So I don't know if that helps at all. <laughs> it's like really quite a long story when you ask me what it was like to grow up with Jim as a dad. There's about a million stories I could get into, but hopefully that gave you a little bit of a summary. Um, I think, long story short, we love each other so much. Our family's very, very close. That is because of definitely my parents. Um, we love adventures. We love each other. We love helping other people. Um, and we love, at the end of the day, we love good moose steak <laughs> that we know exactly where it came from from an adventure that we can talk about over dinner as we put the steak on the grill and sit down as a family to enjoy it. So there you go. Hope that helps.